what's up guys welcome back to my channel i'm here to do my mid-year freak out tag also can we appreciate the fact that i finally got rid of my valentine's day decorations i tried to do more of like a floral look for the summer season so let's get right into it question number one best book you've read so far in 2020 Hands down, King of Fools by Amanda Foody. I gave this book a five stars and I absolutely freaking loved it. The third and final book comes out, I think in September. So I'm so excited. I just loved it. The atmosphere, the characters, the mystery, the intrigue, the drama. I mean, everything was just so heightened in this book. I can't say too much, obviously, because it's a sequel, um, but it is the second book in the Shadow Game series by Amanda Foody. I believe the first book is called Ace of Shades. So fantastic book, a fantastic series. Definitely check it out. Question number two, best sequel you've read so far in 2020? Technically, King of Fools by Amanda Foody, but I didn't want to choose a different book for this so i went with the wicked king by holly black because this is a sequel that blew my mind i read the cruel prince and i think i gave it a four stars i thought it was decent like it was a good book but i just didn't fall in love with it and then it was a really long time before i even read the wicked king i just read it maybe like two weeks ago and oh my gosh again i was just so into it the drama and the mystery and the action the backstabbing it was so so good i was so into it i could not stop reading it question three new release you haven't read yet but want to i have two books i'm not really a person to keep up with new releases so that's why i don't have very many but this train is being held by easy May Emile Williams. I believe this is like a cute romance. I don't know if it's YA. I think it's YA. It's basically these two teenagers, I believe, meet on the train, but they're from two totally different worlds. I think the girl is like a rich upper class girl, and then the love interest is a Latino, I think middle class guy who is struggling with being accepted by his father i didn't read a lot into it but it just sounded really cute so that's one i think it came out just recently in july or maybe february i don't know but it's one that i really really want to read the second book i have yet to read is anna k by jenny lee and this is a modern anna karenina retelling by Tolstoy from Tolstoy. I read uh, the synopsis for Anna Karenina and just imagining all of that happening in a modern New York setting. I mean, I am here for it. I read some of the reviews and it basically said it was like Gossip Girl meets Anna Karenina. <laughs> so, I mean, that sold me. I love Gossip Girl. So, I'm so excited to read that book. Question four Most anticipated release for the second half of 2020. Like I said, I don't keep up with a lot of new releases, so I do have three that I'm really excited for. So the first one is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. It is a sapphic fantasy Cinderella retelling with a black female lead. I was obsessed with Cinderella when I was little. Actually, I think my seventh birthday party was Cinderella themed. I dressed up as Cinderella, like full costume, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> so I'm very excited for this retelling. I love that it's a, it sounds like a very, very unique retelling of Cinderella. I don't think I've read many, if any, Cinderella retellings. So this one I'm definitely so excited for. The second new release is Queen of Volts by Amanda Foodie, the finale of the Shadow Game series. I believe it is releasing in September. I think Cinderella is Dead is releasing in July. The third book I'm really excited for is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This I believe is an October release and she wrote the Stalking Jack the Ripper series which I absolutely loved. Still have not read the fourth and final book of that series but 
that's besides the point. Anyways, so this has like all of the creepy vibes. The cover is absolutely stunning and I think it will be perfect for an October read. I don't think I will read it in October because I'm just always late to the party. But nonetheless, I'm excited for it. Question number five, biggest disappointment. Ugh, I have two. Um, the first one is Blood Air by Amelie Wen Zhao. I think this was either a 2020 release or a late 2019 release, but I was so excited for this book. I thought the cover was amazing. My mom actually bought me this book and it, I just, I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to. I don't know, I just found myself kind of not interested in what was going on. The second book I was disappointed in was The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Better, and this was just a disappointment because I love Alice in Wonderland retellings, reimaginings, and I think all of the ones that I have read so far I've been pretty satisfied with, but The Looking Glass Wars, I was bored. Bored out of my mind. Like, we made it past the halfway point and I was like so shocked that we had made it that far in and like nothing was really happening. <laughs> so it was, I was just really bored reading that book. Question number six, biggest surprise. This was the Shadow Game series by Amanda Foodie. So I can't remember when the first book released, but I remember when it did, a lot of people were talking about it on booktube or I, at least when I joined booktube, like I saw it around, I saw people talking about it, but for some reason I thought I wouldn't enjoy it. I don't know, something about the like Las Vegas casino mafia vibes put me off. I don't know why, but it did. I just thought that wouldn't be something that I would enjoy, so when I finally did read it, I was shocked at how much I enjoyed it. I actually read book one and book two back to back because that's how much I loved it, which is so strange. I usually take months, if not years, in between books in a series. So I was just shocked at like how much I loved it and how hooked this series got me. The second biggest surprise of 2020 was Folk of the Air series by Holly Black. I actually finished all three books already, so I finished the series. So this was a surprise just because even though I enjoyed the first book, I wasn't left wanting to read the second book immediately after, which is why there was such a big gap in between. So like I said before, I was just so surprised when I finished book two and immediately had to start book three. It wasn't back to back. I did read, I think, two books in between, but I, it was in my mind, like, I need to read this third book. Question number seven, favorite new author? I think it would have to be Amanda Foodie. I mean, I've fallen in love with her Shadow Game series, and I actually read the synopsis for Daughter of the Burning City, which I think is one of her older books, and I'm really, really intrigued by the synopsis, but I think Amanda Foodie has become one of my new favorite authors that I will most likely check up and see what they're releasing next. Question eight, newest favorite crush? Now this is so strange, I feel like I've not had any new book crushes. I don't know why, maybe I'm reading the wrong books, but I feel like before when I was younger and I was reading, like every book I read, <laughs> I had a new book crush, and it just doesn't happen as much anymore. But if I had to choose, I would probably uh, say Cole, I think is how you say his name, Cole Westfall from the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I've been buddy reading this this series with Madison from Madison Green. And I I wouldn't say he's like my crush, but I'm definitely, I like Selena with Cole. So maybe he's not my personal crush, but it's who I'm rooting for. Question nine, newest favorite character? I have two. So Selena Sardothian from the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I am, I think, currently on book two, and she's just such a badass. Like, she's an assassin, she stands up for herself, she's not a damsel in distress at all. I don't know, I just love her kick-ass scenes where she's just standing up for herself and, you know, really sticking it to the man. Also, a new favorite character would have to be Naomi Westfield from You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogle because this girl is witty AF. She is so petty, kind of, at times, and just so, so extra. You Deserve Each Other is a, uh, I think it's an adult romance, 
that just released this year. You Deserve Each Other is about Naomi and Nicholas. They have been engaged, I think, for like half a year or something like that. And Naomi does not really want to get married. Like she's realized that she doesn't really know Nicholas and she finds herself just not being present in the moment and being excited for her wedding. So she wants to call it off. But because Nicholas's parents have put in most of the money for the wedding, she's afraid that if she calls it off, she will have to pay. And she doesn't have a job. Um, she's just slowly losing her savings that she did have. So she does not want to have to foot the bill. So Nicholas and Naomi kind of engage in a petty bickering war of trying to get the other person to call off the wedding. And it's just amazing. I'm having a fun time. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm having such a good time reading it. And Naomi is iconic. Question 10, book that made you cry. There's only one book and I can't, I think I might have cried a little bit or not cried, but I definitely had like a few stray tears fall out. And that was The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. And I can't say a lot, but this is the like prequel novella to the actual Throne of Class series. You know, it, it just, it hurt me. There was this character who we did not even know for that long. Like this character does not appear anywhere else <laughs> in the main series. And something tragic happens to this character. And I about disowned Madison when I finished The Assassin's Blade because I was so sad for an entire day. I finished the book and I was still sad. Like the entire day I could not stop thinking about this one character and what happened to this character. I thought my life was ruined for a day. <laughs> so I think yeah I did maybe cry a little bit, a few straight tears, The Assassin's Blade. Book that made you happy, question 11. I would have to say You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogle. It's just so witty and uh, I'm having a fun, fun time reading this book. I think I have about three hours left of the audiobook, so I'm almost done. This is a book that I will definitely pick up and read whenever I'm feeling down in the future. Most beautiful book you bought so far this year. I have not bought any books this year. I want to say that's a lie. I feel like I must have bought one. Yeah, no, actually no, I don't think so. And then the final question, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? There's really nothing. I've just not wanted to pressure myself into being, I need to read this, I need to read this. So I'm kind of taking it very casually. This year has actually been a fantastic reading year for me. So in 2019, I set my Goodreads goal to 52 books. I think I only read maybe 25. I know it was for sure less than 30. And this year I decided to set my reading goal to 50. So I reduced it by two. And as of mid June, I have read 41 books. I have nine books left before I reach my Goodreads goal, which is bananas considering I barely made it at all. I didn't make it at all last year. So I feel what's helped with that is that I'm just reading whatever I want to read. I will say I think I'm not reading as critically as I did last year, which is why I have not been doing wrap ups, but I've not been doing any wrap ups because I'm not really reading super super critically i'm i'm just reading for enjoyment i'm reading books that have been sitting on my shelf for a long time or books that i've had in my mind that i wanted to read and just really enjoying the story for what it is you know just a good time a good book <laughs> and i'm enjoying reading again i'm having fun i'm loving the stories that i'm reading and i've read 41 books so i think this method is really helping me out so I don't I'm not really pressuring myself to read anything I guess I could say I'm hoping to get through all of the unread books on my shelf I think I'm making good progress so that's it for the mid-year freak out tag I hope you really enjoyed it please give it a big thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already let me know down in the comments below if you like this new background setup I feel like it looks a little plain. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just used to having the like super colorful bright garland strung across and now that 
it's kind of more subtle I don't know <laughs> I don't know if I like it or not so leave me a comment down below what you think about my new background is there anything that I should add my name is Elle and I can't believe we're already halfway through 2020 and I'll see you in next time's video